astronauts of the past 45 years, have all returned to Earth struggling to convey the enormity of what they have discovered and with their perceptions clearly changed. To be able to extend that privilege to people from all walks of life has been a long-held ambition at Virgin. The important thing about today's accomplishment is this is not an end, it's just a very good beginning. beginning. Well, hello, I'm Richard Branson. We've been fortunate enough to have achieved some pretty extraordinary things at Virgin over the years, but perhaps none quite as amazing as what you'll see in the next few minutes. Probably like many of you, I can still clearly remember sitting with my mum and dad, my two sisters at our family home in England back in 1969, watching those live black and white pictures of two men who had traveled to another world. I was spellbound and determined there and then that I would one day follow them to space. It's taken a little longer than I imagined, but thanks to Bert Rutin, Spaceship One, and those flawless history-making X-Prize flights in 2004, Virgin Galactic is now well on its way to becoming the world's first commercial space line. The day that Bert won the X-Prize was a hugely significant one for us. When it was all over, I remember chatting to Bran Binney, the pilot on that epic flight. It's got all the right elements to excite the people for all the right reasons. The ride up is momentous. The view at the top is hugely rewarding. The ride back down is pretty spectacular as well. The pictures are pretty dramatic, but the, the eye is so much more dynamic. You combine that with the other things going on, the weightlessness, it's pretty wonderful. The rocket motor ride is pretty memorable as well. You're not going to soon forget that, especially ignition. Before you ignite it, you're going, you're indicating 140 knots or so. And within 10 seconds or 11 seconds, you're supersonic. So, you know, you get three Gs on your back instantly when it lights. And uh, boy, that first 10 seconds is about the most dynamic flying I've ever done. <laughs> This this wave of energy flows through the vehicle and it is it's, it's high water. It, it is just, high water. When you look out the window and you see the curvature of the earth and you can see the edge along the edge of the earth, you can see this thin blue line that is the atmosphere. And the colors and the textures on the ground and it's just it's a it's a mind blowing thing to see. It really is. I mean I'm sure everybody who's been in the shuttle or on the space station knows the same thing, but I'd never seen that before, and it really, really was a remarkable experience. Our suborbital space trips promise to be the most intense and wonderful experiences that our passengers have ever had. We have the right technology, we have committed the funding, and importantly, we bring an enormous amount of operational expertise that comes from years of carrying millions of passengers in comfort and safety on our aircraft and trains. This experience is at the heart of our ability to offer a breathtaking journey in an environment which will be as safe as we can possibly make it. And we're helped enormously in that objective by Bert Rutan's genius for design and construction. When you air launch almost out of the atmosphere, if you have any issues with the rocket engine, you shut it down, you dump the fuel, you glide in and make a normal landing. That's huge, that's extremely important. We are in the process of optimizing, absolutely optimizing the experience that you will have when you fly in space. And it's just going to be fabulous. Spaceship One has a unique feathering configuration. It can come into the atmosphere at any angle and it'll straighten itself out without the pilot having to fly that or without a computer having to do it. And this is the first uh, horizontal landing, runway landing spacecraft that's ever had this feature. So we're immune to accidents caused by flight control failure during re-entry. Every day, people from all walks of life and many different countries are making reservations with us 
to experience space for themselves. Hi, my name is George Whiteside. And I'm Loretta Hidalgo. And uh, we're going to be riding in this plane. Ever since I was a lad, I, I wanted to go to space. I used to read the science fiction stories and, and dream about flying through space. And now it looks like, courtesy of Richard Branson, it's going to be possible. Growing up in Soviet Union, I had two dreams, go to Disneyland and go into space. My family thinks I'm a little bit uh, tipsy, but that's okay. I know this is something that uh, later on they're going to look back and say, I can't believe my father did that or my grandfather did it and so forth. Our first Virgin Galactic astronauts will be booking their own place in history as pioneers of a new space age. The video and photographic images they will bring back from the journey will be theirs to share with their children and grandchildren. Helping to reignite the excitement for exploration and discovery and a permanent record of their part in the story of space.